Hello and herzlich willkommen zum Auf die Fresse, the WXW Review podcast in English. I mean, he's Mike, and how's it going, Mike? All going well. Um, it's it's uh, well, uh, you the, the the song we heard just there is obviously uh, what we are talking about today, but I think we're, we're going back to traditional uh, traditional September uh, schedule, I think, this week, aren't we? Yeah, this week or well, this month, whatever. Uh, should run. We're looking at uh, Fan 2015 in Hamburg. We've got a few bits and pieces to go about first, but um, yeah, I guess we kind of jinxed things last time we recorded. You know, we <laughs> talked about you know, uh, really? Lucky Kid, Thielman, Metahan, he paid shock at the top. You know, that word, you know, his comeback, we were all going, is it a comeback? Is he on a special yeah. team? And then, of course, the day we posted it all hit the fan. NXT UK is no more. It is next brand. Instead, well, your favorite Monty Python uh, Joel Keir, but well, we yeah. uploaded at five, and then by six o'clock, um, it was completely like irrelevant, which <laughs> I mean, happens, yeah. I was one like maybe two or three people watched every week, and know it's, there's more than that, but tongue in cheek. And it's like watching the shows going through, it's like, guess who they're released, they're released, they're on the show, oh, they're still there. So, obviously, you know. News is there, NXT UK gone. They're supposedly rebranding as NXT U at some point next year, even though... Doubt it. Well, two, three weeks since the announcement, the term NXT U isn't trademarked. They don't have a placeholder logo. It's like, just me being very cynical, surely you would have even just like an Etch-A-Sketch logo to throw. Well, the, the, the thing I did see was there was the... Um, and I didn't watch it, but there was the the promo prior to, was it Worlds Collide? Um, uh, well, yeah, this, uh, yeah, world, yeah, the world world world, uh, world collide where um, Tyler Bate effectively said, "Well, NXT Europe is around the corner, and I want to go in as the new NXT champion." And I'm like, "That's that's as much promotion as I've ever seen for it." Because there's yeah, not been a, there's not been a press show. conference, has there? No. All there's been is. Tyler Bate mentioned it on NXT TV and Shawn Michaels doing an interview with the newspaper. I mean, I and, know, well, there was Fox too, News. It? Not to go too off the uh, beaten track, but like, you know, NXT UK conveniently started up around the time, you know, World of Sport and Ref had their TV shows. And I saw today uh, Body Zoy out of Belgium. Guys, don't do it. What are they thinking yeah. about a TV show? I uh, was looking this afternoon, yeah, Body Zoy. Um, and again, this is me, uh, admin live on air. They've had uh, announced a TV show this afternoon, I think it was. Let me pull up the tweet. Um, I'm just going to put this into English. Bodies are resting back on TV, broadcast on TeleMB. Uh, fifth anniversary show uh, this weekend, Friday and Saturday. And then a show called Miracle Friday, September 30th, Saturday, October 1st. Well, that, that show's been on YouTube, hasn't it, for a while? Um, it's not a new and show, we now know, so yeah, it's not, it's yeah. not new, new, but you know, proper TV yeah. coverage is usually one of the um, you no know, uh, red flags for uh, certain companies, Stanford, look more <coughs> historically. But and anyway, we can not talk about that, but yeah, plus the next UK and all the releases, a lot of familiar names, uh, back on the scene. Uh, talk about not Tierman, Met, uh, Met Lucky Kid, he's back. Uh, he's already been booked for a tag festival, taking on uh, Axel Tish on the Monday show. I was like, Sunday yeah. show, get yeah. my dates mixed up. Um, he's got a lot of dates as well. Well, like this, when you've, when you've gone from the kind of deals they supposed to had, you're going to need those. Yeah, sure. Um, Amal, she got released. She's uh, walked straight into a triple threat for the women's title over Tag Festival weekend. Yeah. Which you know, makes sense. Other WXW alum, Shah Samuels, Nina Samuels, not related, despite what uh, some videos will have you believe. Mark Andrews, Trent Seven, all gone. And, yeah, I mean, definitely you, a lot of uh, you know, familiar faces looking to come back. And it'll be interesting to see how many roles, maybe not this year, maybe next year, you know, become you know, a fairly bigger part of the scene that you know, they're now back to being part of. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, at least personally for me, I think there's a lot of animosity towards these people. And I I, I, would, I would admit that, it, that also does come from my side. But... There's, there's, it's a very well needed sort of shot in the arm. I think, especially, I, I think people like that. There, there are, there are levels to the people who signed, and we're not going to go too much into it. But I think people like Shah, 
who effectively graduated the UK Indies. There was nothing left for him to do. I have no begrudge of him going to NXT and then coming back down. And he's, you know, he's. It's. I have. I. I have no problem watching Shaw. Likewise, with um, you know, in a way, with Andrews and Seven, they both took the good deals, the ones that actually were worth a, worth a. Weren't, you weren't working for CEX wages. If if it ends up being something like Mandrews for sixteen carat, I'd actually have absolutely no problem with that at all. I think that'd be a great sort of name to go in. But it's. Uh, I think it's. I I I'm fearful for. Um, I'm fearful for. Uh, people who who were absolutely nothing on the UK indies stepping back into the UK indies as big stars and getting the heroes welcome, which I think they will get in some places, but. I think hopefully the places that we watch that, that doesn't happen. I don't think so far. Charles appeared in ICW where the Dennis obviously worth throwing progress. Yeah. Um, I think Riot Cabaret as well, he did a surprise. So names are coming back and it'll be interesting to see how many, you know, make the trip over to Oberhaus and with us at the end of the month. But um so a few announced the tag festival for the end of the month. Uh of course we're gonna do a full preview of that now next episode. Um I think that's it's been pretty much a light uh, news few weeks and over. We are on the summer break, summer break, effectively, aren't we? Um, so we're going to have a quick look at the Fight Forever show that dropped for free on YouTube. Um, just quick thoughts, because they, I guess they're going to be doing this for the foreseeable future of these. It's not a full show they're dropping, they're dropping matches. Yeah. And yeah. again, I don't know if the cage match has these out of order or what, but the way they're being uploaded doesn't match what cage match puts up. So like, <laughs> it's like, just selfishly, it's from a viewer's perspective. What am I meant to review this in? <laughs> because the thing is, even yeah. when they're uploaded, I don't know if you caught, or maybe it was me, you know, fat fingering and clicking the wrong thing. Dave Bradshaw, in his little bit of turmeric coffee, was calling matches, not wrong match, obviously, but referring to stuff that hadn't been uploaded or something like that. Yeah, that happened a few times. Um, I I saw all of the the first half of the taping. I think there's one or two that I've, unfortunately I've still not managed to catch. But um, yeah, it was. Um, I, I I mean, if it was me, I'd be order. I'd be reviewing them in upload order. But then I suppose yeah, you can't, you run into the situation where uh, <laughs> where uh, where you got different upload orders to what's actually happened in real life. So we'll just a quick run through. So the whole thing of this is. The stars of the academy taking on how would you say proper talent? Well, I say proper talent, that's awful. Like, you know, guys, well, the make- has established itself as having a being a promotion with a main roster, in yeah, inverted commas. So, I think, yeah, that's and fair like to say route. development and development of main roster. Yeah. So, you've got like this proving ground gimmick. Um, yeah. you can see from the parents have had so, uh, Peach Tahani beat Alex Kane just over nine minutes. No fun match, I thought. Kane going for suplexes a lot. Tihani yeah. eventually escaped from Goffwin and things to shoot and start press. Um, tag match. So, this one, this is uh, like if you're new to wrestling and you see one match advertised and then read the result. So, it was Vyasa Hungry against Ilya Bloom and Leon San Giovanni. Of course, LSG was in as a guest trainer. So, he yeah. I guess, tagging with uh, Ilya. I guess this probably would have been the rotation spot if he wasn't, if he was. Um, not, not injured. Yeah, you probably the, would say so. But um, yeah, match started out with Dover. I mean, his arm was you know, taped to heck from what happened to Shortcut. And you could tell something wasn't right. Um, I think was the spot was like a drop kick into the wall. And then that was it. They, he just went to the back. But Bedreska came out to finish the match with Icarus was allowed, which, again, I'm not going to get funny with refereeing, but, you know, some people would probably get a bit funny with that all. Well, why are we allowing a substitute? This isn't football. Yeah. But um, I suppose there's an element of... I suppose there's an element of uh, it, it's Dreisker's house, in a way, because he's still technically head coach, isn't he? Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's something that's um, storyline-wise interesting. Like, that's never really been... Like, in some case, he's still the head coach of Academy, yet he's trying to rebuild. Like, I don't know if that's something they're parking for later on, but... Yeah, we don't know. Maybe it's a bit of an ambi- it's a bit of a uh, logic hole, I think. Really good that. The only Dreisker once they you know, got stuff back on track, him and Nicholas won with a crossfire, which was really weird. 
I could do another people's moves, but if it works, it works. Um, and then right after, so this was right afterwards on the live show, but not right afterwards on the upload. Uh, Robert Rice had beat Orshi just over six minutes. Uh, you know, we're doing this match a few times, been you know, pretty good so far. One bit right at the end, I think Orshi uh, broke Rice's nose with the back elbow. So not a good night for the ambush lads when it comes to uh, injuries. Yeah, although it appears it's, it appears to be sort of back to um, back fine now, I think, because I, I saw a video of him the other day and he seems to have healed up or whatever it was. So um, it's just bloody nose not broken one, but yeah, it's a good crimson mask him open, at least. Uh, rolling on, Norman Harris beat Danny Frey in just over eight minutes. Uh, Michael Knight, uh, really good seven minute match with Jacob Crane. Bearing in mind, I think the last uh, time we spoke, Mike. And we said, oh, Jacob Crane is a great character. Well, he pushed Michael Knight pretty close here. You know, it was more than just the guy who was you know, scared out of his mind for body slams. <laughs> um, you know, pretty good. And I think that's the kind of match you really want to see out of this environment where, yeah, main roster, you're going to have you know, your gimmick or, you know, you're there for two minutes to lose the body slams or get chucked straight off ring by Bobby Guns. But these kind of things, you don't want to see your quick squashes. And yeah, you, where you, do you, want, you want to, um, like... I, I kind of think about this as if if this was if Fight Forever was happening in uh, 2018, this would be your matches between Norman Harris or Fr- Norman Harris versus um, Emil Satoshi. Like I kind of that if they were doing this show back then, this is what I'm sort of imagining would be coming on these sort of shows. And you know, th- there is an established main roster and and uh, academy roster and in a way, the because the academy uh, people have come onto the main shows kind of as much as they are, it's kind of a little bit um, blurred in a way. Um, but this effectively these ma- these these shows, what I like about them is that they're they're almost re-establishing the hierarchy. There's a reason why Michael Knight is a main roster guy and Jacob Crane is still considered an academy guy, although he had he gave him a good fight. The experience of Knight just you know, it, it it was made clear in this in this show. If that makes sense, it's kind of like the you know the new Japan model, and guess to a lesser extent what Ref Pro do for contenders, where you have your defined these are the guys who are coming up. They're not expected to get wins against your main roster guys, but they're expected to put in a good fight and come close. And you saw that a lot up and down the cards. Um, the yeah. next match, Fast Time Mudo over Nick Schreier. I thought it was decent again. We've said this before, and I don't know what it is. There's something about Moodle this year without uh, Seth Mays. just doesn't seem to be clicking for me. And this match to me just wasn't much different. No, he's a different he's a different beast in um, in, in front of a crowd, I think, unfortunately. Um, it's almost as if he just... I don't think he can cut it. I don't really know what it is. Um, I think we'd speculated about a few political things. We, we assumed he might have actually been on his way out, but that's obviously that seems to be completely unfounded. But um, yeah, it's it's not really clicking here either. I think Nick Shree is great. Um, I think he's a really exciting sort of young talent. Um, kind of got the um, very very sort of white meat baby face sort of cheeky chap sort of thing about him, and I really like that. Um, he's one of, I think he's uh, Tisha and Roman's project, effectively. Yeah, also the uh, Dresden, yeah. I mean, yeah. something going awesome. looking on this cage match. Less than a year. Just past the year's first match was yeah. July last year. Yeah, so just over, a, okay, just over a year then, sorry. Um, he's, I think he's a he's an incredible, pros- incredibly exciting prospect there, but it's... Um, I think it's. I wouldn't want to rush him straight into it because I think he is. I, I don't think he, he needs to be rushed really. No, not nowadays. I've, you know, no disrespect to anyone who we've mentioned, but like, to actually we have had those guys on the shows who, like, they, I don't say they tried Voss, but Nosk was a different story, but they had the guy who was being pushed up as being you know, the guy who almost overshadowed the academy, for want of better words. You know, you had now you know it's Ilya Bloom has beat you not know, be designated academy guy for want of a better word. Um, so you know it's a whole kind of not you know academy guy is a gimmick, but you don't have like two or three academy guys who are you know all doing the same kind of thing, especially if they're not on the same kind of storyline. Um, I mean, 
I know Nick's been doing with uh, GWF. He's had a few appearances on. Uh, yeah, he's from he's from like he's on the, I say the old next step sort of circuit. Um, he works a lot of that them sort of them sort of East German indies, really, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm looking through like um, ERW East Side Revolution, which that just feels like a mashup of like like Cop Cop GWF Provos to put together, but. Um, it's done a lot of, like unlimited, you know, geograph project Nova out Berlin. So a fair amount you know, for a guy in you know, year one when you know, still there's not that many shows you know, comparatively speaking running. He's getting himself around there. Yeah, for sure, and it's what you want to do. Um I, it wouldn't surprise me if he popped up in um Austria as well, to be honest at the moment, because that seems to be Eat quite a bubbling scene. Yeah, it seems to be quite a bubbling promotion that, down there. So it wouldn't surprise yeah. me if that happened. Probably want to touch on my subs. Um, we mentioned a few episodes back, uh, Julian Nero making the comeback. He's yeah. retiring for those couple of shows on PWO. And a. He's effectively got two matches left. I think one of them said it's a, a reunification with uh, Monster Consulting, which, yeah, that's yep. going to make tape and that's what I really want to see. Shame can't kind of happen in Germany, but and I'll take yeah. a you know, reunion somewhere at least. Yeah, and obviously, it isn't, we're not a we, we're mainly WXW, but um, that 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 is gold fiber card. Um, there's one of the other interesting match, at least from I think from both of our perspectives, from considering where we where we mainly watch our wrestling is um, they've got Peter Tihani versus Michael Oku. Um, that's which one is, which, yeah, that's one yeah, I really that, that needs to make tape, um, for sure, because. Like I say, I, I don't think there's anybody more made for WXW than Michael Oku in the UK. So it's, um, yeah, I hope uh, I hope uh, Droisk is twitching the curtain on that one. That's all I'm saying. I know Oku had back to payments with um, GWF and not yet been followed up on. So, you know, guys, you know, you're going to be the same card as him. Give him a shout. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, Michael Oku doesn't need us to, <laughs> to, no, no, to pick him up. But... Yeah, but the people give him way more it's, stars uh, and way more coverage, but, you know, yeah. every little helps and all that. But, uh Go on main event, uh, Bobby Guns beat uh, Ender Car in 11 minutes 37. And my God, I mean, I know you said you hadn't seen all of them. Please tell me you've seen this one, Mike. Oh, yeah, no, I did watch this one. Um, I thought this was this was really, really good. Um, again, um, another sort of sleeper Bobby Guns hit, um, mm-hmm. hit really, uh, following on from the uh, the uh, match front with Tisha at Shortcut, which I think we both said was probably the best WXW match of the year. Um, yep. I don't think this was that level, but um, it was still um, excellent. It got it got quite a lot of buzz from the people who watched the show, <laughs> and, I, and that's that's unfortunately the people who watched the show are probably the people who would be listening to it. Um, so, but it was um, yeah, this was really really good, really hard hitting, quite a slow pace in places. Um, it was a, looking at the times. It was well, apart from the tag match, it was the longest match on the card. Um, I think it was a Endercara looked great as well. Um, yep. It was a um, this was the looking at sort of the card. This is kind of the only real um, main roster versus main roster sort of. This this was kind of the main event really on the on the card, despite of where the the. Um, Despite where sort of it was placed on the card anyway, but the um, yeah, I thought this was really really good. This one, the I think uh, one of those things like November Car, I think he had the Abe match, I believe, over um, in the circle week, no, yes, weekend. Like, he's a name I've seen around, like, he did a lot, he did a few British Indies before COVID. It's like, yeah, he's something to him. I think he's based out of Stockholm, which I don't know if that's you know, locations really unfortunate, like. I don't know if it's that much of a scene in Sweden. There but... is there is a few promo- there is a there is a promotion in Stockholm. Um because I uh, I was actually looking at it when I was in Stockholm in July, but there is a promotion in Stockholm. It's not that big as far as, far as I can tell, but the the big Swedish promotions in Gothenburg, which is, you know, three, four hours away. But I think his the big obviously he he works a lot in Body Slam, which is the the uh, kind of the home promotion, well, the biggest one in the Scandinavia, anyway. So, yeah, I'm looking like just this year alone, you're looking like you know, uh, SW out of Gothenburg, 
um, Nordic Leafs in Copenhagen, obviously the West W Wrestling Cult, um, Hungarian Championship Wrestling out of Budapest. Spins. He's getting his air miles in, I'll give him that. For, for, for me, Endercar is having a... He's quietly having a period like Oli Carter was prior to signing. Yeah. Um, he's not really getting... Well, he is getting... He, in fairness, Cara is getting booked in WXW. He's getting pushed quite... Yeah, he is getting booked in WXW, whereas Carter was only really getting booked in GWF sort of with any sort of regularity. But he is quietly having that sort of period like Oli Carter was. And um, I think I think uh, that's a <laughs> he didn't get released, but I think if if it was to happen, Carter versus Cara is, or even Carter and Cara as a tag team would be <laughs> bloody brilliant. I think. So I'm um, just looking through his cage match, and I found one uh, May 2019 LDN, which may, Maverick Mayhew, Cody Hall, and Cara, um, Ricky Knight Jr. all in the same Rumble match. <laughs> What is that? There's, there's some wrestlers in that match. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then there's Cody Hall. Lost, um, God. Lost to uh, OJMO, Mike Loke, at Seoul in May 2019. So yeah, he okay. has been, like I said, it's not, he has done mostly, it's uh, Kamikaze. He used to work in Midlands you know, pre COVID. But yeah, I mean, yeah. absolutely. I've not seen a bad match out of them. Okay, you can say, well, I've not seen that many, but every time yeah. I've seen them, it's been a pleasant surprise, and it's not because I'm going and thinking he's no good either. Yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, he's, he's a bit of an... I think there is a lot he needs to improve on, um, but I think equally there is... He, he's, I think what we'd call him is a rough diamond, really. Um, yep. it's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of potential in there. Um, I just think he just needs to work more and more and more, and that's not entirely in his hands because if you don't get booked, you can't work people. But every time, but he's he's in at least WXW is putting him in with world class people. He's putting him in, putting him in with Arbe. He's um, it wouldn't surprise me if he was in Carrot this year. Nope. Um, it's coming out. It wouldn't surprise me if he was. And I still run the back end of this year, start next yeah. year, get warmed up. He's had stick, Bobby Gunn's stick the shotgun belt on him. I would. Yeah, Bobby Guns, Hector Invictus, uh, is that the uh, shotgun four way? And again, you, know, you can say, well, it's a four way. You don't get put in a you know, four way for a title on Coward Weekend just to be back guy filling the slots. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so anyway, so that's V5 Trevor's up on YouTube. Um, I think the next one they're recording is, I know we put this down last month, last uh, show notes. I think they said it's the November one. They're, they're well, they're, they are, um, yeah, they're not recording another one until November because they're doing um, a We Love Wrestling at Tag Fest, isn't it? So uh, there's yep. probably no need for it. Yeah, so again, we'll go for upcoming days, but October 3rd, you've been Gelson Kirshen. I, uh, I suspect there probably will be the occasional recorded match through over the weekend. You'd expect they could like the pre-show stuff and what have you. They could record a pre-show Fight Forever match every night, or to be honest, every show, and it would wouldn't really affect anything. No. Nope. So. And we've got the guys to do it now, so why exactly. not? Exactly. You know, we're, we're going to our main event. Um, we're not doing a fan appreciation night this year for whatever reason. Not slot in the calendar, but going back to August. I don't appreciate their fans this year, obviously. Oh, come <laughs> I'm on! Joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. But well, we know both fans from Turbine House. If you want our tickets, uh, just drop us a, a line of DMs. But, um, so, yeah, fan 2015. Um, this is one that's typically been, well, so I've been one of two night shows. I think, was it the infamous one, so what, four years ago, where they did fan in Oberhausen and Hamburg after, and Frankfurt one as well, in conjunction with Progress, which... I think yeah, that, that was the only one I ever did. I think it's maybe a uh, weekend we speak about another show because there a lot happened on those... <laughs> And a lot of uh, some slum packing. Anybody um, who knows me would will know that I, I will repeatedly say the progress show after the fan appreciation I showed was the best show I've ever been to, and it's never made tape, so it's it's a uh, it's a hushed uh, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a, really? it's a hushed uh, spoken in hushed tones that one. But progress Frankfurt one didn't make tape. 
No, the Progress Hamburg one isn't on tape. If you try and find, you can't find it on Progress On Demand. Okay, this is going to derail things, but I yeah, just want to progress on the one. Well, last time I checked, it wasn't anyway. But <laughs> unfortunately, I can't even check back Body Shop because I literally just got an email saying there's a blooming uh, date server out, so that's down a time oh. recording. So <laughs> Progress Hamburg was 2018, wasn't it? Yes, it was the same time where we did the um, what was it the, the same year they did the Mercator as well? So yes, Hamburg, so. uh. It's not on there, unless it's on there now and it's since I've checked, but it wasn't on there last time. Yeah, I was just I was looking up for card and cage match. That's one where they had um, lost it now. They had Walter, no Chris Books went to no contest, so then they decided to. I, I think I've seen, so I don't know, it's just clips on YouTube. So they had Walter Chris Books go to no contest, and then yeah. they decided to pair Chris Books, Walter, and David Starr as one team, which is bad enough in one way. Against Absolute Andy, Bobby Guns, and Maris Alani. At the yeah. time, Andy and Maris were feuding in WXW. Yeah, Andy and Marius were feuding in WXW, and Bobby Guns was um, <laughs> like on the way to be feuding with Andy. Yeah, completely stupid. <sighs> well, you know, they have a reputation for a reason, I guess. But um, that was when yeah. progress was meant to be good as well. Meant to be. <laughs> using the, uh, I, I will word. just. We, I know we don't have it, but Bobby Merck can say I played the faith. And yeah, that journey to it ain't on. No, I'm kind of clicking not. through like mad on their on demand, and it ain't there. No, it's a shame. So by, anyway, by the dude, it's, it's a theme. But anyway, yeah, going to the good Hamburg show. Completely um, off topic. Yeah. So uh, August 28, 2015, uh, 450 is gone to Dubex for themselves. And this was the show that ended the uh, summer pals with summer break. So, yeah, pretty much where we are now, we're impromptu. And yeah, I completely got my days of those um, overdubs, Mike. I know we yeah. open our shows every week with them, but I, yeah. um, I, because I, I, I've never seen this show before, but I, I don't ever. I must have watched, started watching just after they changed because, um. I don't ever remember them having different overdubs for every match because when I started watching WXW sort of regularly, it was always oh we just they just used one song so it was yep. usually this ain't the end of me. Um, <laughs> they just well, they used, used that. Different ones for tours, like you know, we yeah, yeah. And they had and they had the tour one and they had um, they had a few different ones, but it was always the same um, the same song through the entire show. Um, but. This one had different ones, which was interesting, but they none of them were any good. But it, I bet it was better in the venue because at least you got the proper music. But that's a discussion for another day. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather have dubbing and live music better, but there we go. Yeah, I mean, I guess I suppose it's you know, what we go for, we go for VOD live environment. But I mean, you know, Technomax has got plenty of airs uh, <laughs> on the show, but. Uh, we opened off with a world tag title match. Uh, Prost, uh, Mike Schwartz, and Toby Blunt uh, defending against the Shields. That's Bobby Guns and Vincent the Beast. Uh, so Prost won the tag titles at Shortcut to the Top. This was the last show before this. Yeah. Um, so this is their first defense. And the thing that blew me away, Mike's like, you know, we're talking like summer 2015. This crowd was hot. And it wasn't just because you know, Bobby Guns up and up from Bremen, so we've got the natural. We yeah, but they it. weren't really leaning into that then, though, were they? Not in this match, no. They were leaning yeah. into the Bremen stuff later in the card, but like, yeah. this was this felt like the, I, I don't want to say the good old days, but it was like, they were reacting for everything. Yeah, um, I mean, to be fair, they, they at this point, they already were described as the power crowd because the year before, they had the uh, the the hot and spicy versus uh, Outsiders match. That ha match had happened the year before. So at this point, they already were, they already had that reputation. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So um, so I think from that respect, yeah, it wasn't really that surprised. But yeah, they were really, really hot for this. Well, they were hot for a lot of it, to be honest. Um, the, um, But I think, speak with regards to this match, um, the shields, I thought, um, worked really, really well together. I've not, actually, surprisingly, I've not actually seen much of the tag team shield stuff. 
Because I think, again, when I started watching Shotgun, that was not a thing. I think they had their runners of tag team and they started doing Bobby Guns the single. I mean, no, the I think when I first started going to Bexley, uh, Bobby had the, the, the fringed green trunk. Uh, yeah, he had the tassels, he, yeah. It's like, I was, I mean, I was watching this and I was just thinking at the end of a match, you know, obviously Bobby Guns has moved on to bigger things like in terms of Bexley, but if uh, Vinny the Beast ever gets you know, fully fit and you know, we want to go back to this, he should also be a you know, main event tag team until next week's day, and not just because of Bobby. On this form, they would you know, yeah. know for a lot of the current tag teams. Yeah, I think that could work. Um, I I think it's a different Bobby now. Uh, Bobby's kind of bulked up a bit more now. Um, he's flying around like a bloody cruiserweight in this match. <laughs> Um, which, to be honest, is really cool watching. But yeah, it's a different wrestler now. Um, uh, Vinny or Tempesta, if we're led to believe, obviously, I think he's. I think the issue is that he's always struggled with the injury, hasn't he? Um, it all seems you know, like yeah, it's a run. Then it's on the shelf, unfortunately. So with that, it's kind of a bit of a. Um, it's a bit of a, bit of a. I don't know. It would be. A, I think it'd be a risk to do the shield sort of long term in general, really. But um, it would be. I'd like to see it. I think because I think they they definitely work really well together. Um, it's kind of the chemistry is uh, as we as, as you sort of say here is uh, you. It's on. Um, it's great chemistry as you'd chemistry as you'd expect from brothers. So uh, second match, uh, Young Yearn Sims. I mean, like you're gonna get this a lot because obviously 2015, seven years ago. Yearn on that match graphic, you look like a completely different person. Like you would seven years ago, but that just you know, caught me off guard. But beat uh, the Mac in nine minutes twenty, and yeah, this was like you know, big guy, you no know, little guy power match. Um, I liked yeah. Yearn's gear. Yeah, the eighties, the eighties gear it was very cool. Eighties hey, dollars in fashion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it was you know, the same as the you know, power against speed, you know, the Mac magic upside down crack smash. I don't know if else can want to roll stuff out now that you know, got Mac back in it, but um, it went just for 10 minutes. They managed to do a fair bit. It wasn't just you no know, yearn mad, yearn smash, and Mac doing the whole you know, banana peel stuff. But I think this was just before we started to warm up yearn and the whole stuff with Carson Beck. If my, I haven't got my timelines wrong. Um, it was a decent well, Yen was champion by by Carrot Sixteen, wasn't he? But I'm going to have to check my timelines on. It must have been, because it's three way at sixteen. Because the year after is Yen versus uh, Dita Junior. So he's he's only he's only six months at most away from being champion here. Sure. So let's have a look. I keep on throwing things at you, don't I? <laughs> 2016, yeah, he it was. Oh, yes, yeah, the free win was the whole thing where he, yeah. you no, know, he I had a fourth guy added because he was upset being a free win. Then he turned, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, so they were you know, really heating them up at this point. Um, and yeah, it's that whole second match from the card, you know, really unassuming, but in hindsight, makes sense kind of stuff. Yeah, it was um, it was kind of it was very meat and potatoes sort of really in that respect. Um, but um, it, it, I do really miss Demac. I think is he he look, he's he's been. I saw this past week he's actually been hanging out with uh, Junior. Now he's been because Junior's been over in Europe for uh, a show. Um, and um, yeah, obviously, sort of see Mac was hanging around with him this week. But I do I do kind of miss having Mac around. I feel like he could add a lot as a um, as a sort of a Upper, well, lower, lower, lower mid card sort of gateway sort of guy. Yeah, um, no. Although I don't really, I don't know if he's wrestling still. He, I mean, he still looks to be in great shape, sort of on Instagram. But <laughs> is he still working? So I know he had a back injury. The last match I see on here was uh, September twenty twenty, losing to Crochester. Yeah. Uh, I remember, so he had he had that run in 2018, 2019. Um, well, yeah, to... he had the whole thing with uh, Rise, didn't he? Yeah, so I've uh, just come to his cage match. Uh, he worked for Southside in March 2018. That 
just caught me off guard for some reason. Yeah, that yes, just... that caused an mm. argument with somebody, but I'll talk to you about that after. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we had the um, it was a show I went to in Hamburg uh, in 2018 where he returned, you know, the light out, light on thing, um, and he would, you know, let the rise versus rise stuff. And, yeah, so, you know, a couple of matches, you know, start of 2019, uh, you know, disappears, I think it's the last match in WXW, at least. Was it the hot and spicy? Um, no, it was one after that. Oh, really? Uh House show guests, uh, 16 Carol Gold Revenge in Cutting Holes, losing to Shiggy. Oh, okay. I didn't know Which, that happened. <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I don't know if it may take, well, if it may take, no. only, but I mean, he's done a few since he's done like you know, EWP, Rings of Europe, yeah. uh, Wrestling Cults. I have uh, seen that he has been working, he's just not working very often. And I think as well, you know, I think they say he Maybe he's retired. Back injury. So it's that whole thing, you know, you don't want to really push too far. Which, I mean, again, you know, it, you get people very tired with back problems, they come back. So maybe that's going to be on the cards, but you know, you just don't know. In, in my head, he's always he's he's the perfect guy to to turn up at um, six shortcut to the top. You know, yeah, he would be the sort of perfect guy. Get get ten minutes in the shortcut match, gets eliminated by hot hot new young heel, and then you know you've got something good there. But I don't know, I don't know. It's a shame he's not really around because I did always he's quite like him. He was sort of, in a way, actually, he was in, amidst the uh, amidst the the uh, the the stars of Ilya and Junior and Walter. I think Damak actually for a period was probably one of the biggest stars that, like at least sort of in the English speaking world, because he yeah, did the uh, Cruiserweight Classic. Classic. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it's not like he was you know, bubbling up because he was hanging on the right people. He you not. Know, he got you know, called for Cruiserweight Class. He got some extra stuff out of it. But, yeah, and obviously around here, there's a whole thing with, as we'll talk about later in the card, hot and spicy, but then um, vaguely with Ring Camp, I remember, maybe not quite officially. He was you know, kind of on the fringes, but that's another time. Um, next up, we had uh, Kim Ray. There's his <laughs> name from years gone by. Defending the shotgun title against young Mikhail Schenkenberg. Yeah, he looks really young here, doesn't he? Baby Mike. <laughs> Yeah, I found wasn't too bad. Again, I think a lot of this was, you know, Kim Ray was the body, so you know, he's cheating around, you know, all around the place. Schenkenberg, I remember right, shotgun drop kick, which nearly went through the turnbuckles at one point, which just looked really nasty. But um, again, I, I don't think it's like a run of the mill shotgun tile defense. But I mean, Schenk's originally from Hamburg, if I remember right. Yeah, he's from Mexico. This was like a big yeah. local local guy, so it was fine. Again, no Schenkenberg, you know, he's a lot more established in the Black Studio now compared to what he was here. So you know, it was what it was, you know, 10 minutes, nothing too offensive. And you know, Kim Ray keeps the shotgun belt rolling, I guess. I really didn't like Kim Ray when I used to see him. <laughs> I just I just thought he was a bit pants, really. Um sorry if you're listening, Kim. Um <laughs> his because he's been gone for a while. If I remember right, was it the um, it was a feud when Carson Beck had to retire for the final time? Well, he came back at Carrot. He came back as a surprise return at Carrot 17 and did naffle, basically. Um, yeah, just looking again, thanks, Cage Match. Uh, came, so he did um, you know, Shotgun Live to a. Uh, he did the farewell to Axelich Junior show, uh, Lord of the Tattoo, small shows. Yeah, I remember he had, I think the last thing he did, like main roster for main tape, um, was. Yeah, he did, he did the return at Carrot, didn't he? Uh, he returns well, at Carrot, he beat somebody. I want to say he beat. Um, I want to say he beat. Like he beat like Junior or something on the Sunday. Like he uh, re- returned and beat somebody up, like somebody quite big as well. I'm, I'm I don't know. Just I can't remember. Much, much results, but yeah, but yeah, but it's the last thing I remember was that whole thing where we're building up to him and Carson Beck against Walter and uh, CMJ, and then that yeah. whole um, yeah, not the way they planned for the obvious reason, but yeah, you know, I think it was one of those where of his time, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, 
I wouldn't really. Well, I think he's retired now, isn't he, proper? Yeah, nothing since COVID. Last um, match was for um, what's this? New Generation Wrestling against Chris Rush. Yeah. And before that, against uh, lost to Zeritus, which yeah, very apropos of absolutely nothing. How do you now start following uh, back body drop on Instagram this week, which is like got beaten over notifications, so I need to start turning off. Like uh, Zeritus now for like, really him? Did it? Did, was he looking at you with the wrong eye, and he accidentally followed it? Uh, Sean Michaels' eye. <laughs> Uh, Maybe he's got the before, weird eye, not sure, Michael. <laughs> before I get into any more trouble. So, I guess this is kind of where the card got a little bit south side in. That's not a criticism. Um, too cool, uh, Grandmaster Sex Saint, Scotty Too Hotty, over Reichen Schoen, Kevin Rolston, Maurice van Beethoven. This, to me, is like a lot of this in 2022, both would and wouldn't stand. Like, so sort of how Brian Christopher did the whole thing where. Uh, you know, accused Kevin and Marius of being from uh, Bremen, which obviously been Hamburg, so that you not know, immediately got the crowd on them. There was something else which aged horribly, and I know the voice of wrestling news this all the time. The Wolves ain't gonna like that. I'm not yeah. gonna say it because you no know, people clip things, but yeah, didn't one thing Brian Christopher said didn't age well, and I'm not gonna speak ill of the dead, but yeah, yeah, Scotty too hot, he's zooming in on his underwear for whatever reason, and a guy off a crowd, I guess, but trying to be uh, standing Rikishi. <laughs> yeah, again, I don't think that used particularly well either. But um, um, yeah, this I means your typical you know, touring stars against your locals, which no, the, the crowd loved this. It was year. like I, something I, out of Superstars of Wrestling. Yeah, and I can't yeah. really, you know, you know shit in any of this. Like, it worked for the people of them. Me particularly, I wasn't really that came in. It was full of all kinds of um, what we call the hot dog in the cold. You know, I had Scotty find, then a fan apparently paid it. You know, Scotty ran to the back to get a middle finger out. Um, I mean, this is pretty much the antithesis, I'd say, of what you know people would expect from you no know, WXW stuff at the time. But again, maybe it's been that different for crowds, you no know, like it. I, I can't shoot it down, but. I think I preferred the overdub which we used to start for sure because they played that for God knows how long at the end <laughs> when they had you no know, not Rikishi and another fan out for crowd you no know, dancing from end. Uh, it was what it was. <laughs> yeah, it was um Yeah, it, when you say it was very south side, it was hundred percent that and I think there are quite a few sort of things from this sort of era of WXW where like somebody who's ex WWE comes in, has a really, really strong match, and then just disappears. I sort of look at, for example, Mason Ryan being shotgun champion briefly around this period. John Morrison uh, for, for a cup of coffee. Yeah, although that was a bit later, I think, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, the, it was the. Um, it's still the. Uh, I think this is one of the things where it's like um, very much like pre WXW when it really had its own identity because this would never happen now um i think the closest thing we've had to this recent years would probably use spirit squad at tag for tag yeah tag, that's five years ago. and that was 2017 so yeah, yeah. um or maybe them. maybe some of the um shoot superstars of wrestling which obviously isn't a thing anymore but like i kind of think of the bobby gun uh, sorry uh, billy gun and emil satochi thing but then even then that was just a standard match wasn't it so yeah so, and, uh, not Buff really Buff Buff Jackson anymore. Stone as well, which yeah. yeah, that might not be one to bring up, but um, yeah, I mean, again, very much of its time, but you know, as part of what could uh, you know, give the rest of its charm back in the day, you know, you came for the big stars and you got the rest of the card over and you know, move, you no know, roll on to that. Uh, big demo beat even Kiev now. I think since we've recorded, you know, demo won and lost the progress title. Um, yeah, I really don't know what to say about this match because, like, Demo didn't really do that much in WXW. Like, no, clearly at the end of the match he won. He did that whole universal, you no, know, I want the belt thing. But you no, know, after the next night, didn't appear again for a few months. You no, know, seemed to be more 
there's ICW and what culture in the UK, which was well, he was up. doing W, he was doing Rev Pro as well. Um, it wasn't long after this when he did the um, the Nakamura match at the uh, <laughs> the York Hall where he nearly broke Nakamura's neck and then got signed. So, yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. he's putting up planting seeds for what could have happened, but yeah, I mean, like I say this to me felt like it was a you could see what where the wheels were turning, what they were looking to do, but unfortunately, you know, plans changed and all that. But um, yeah, I thought it was fine for what it was, but I've never been a big demo guy. It was very, uh, it was very. Uh, this is when uh, Kiev was billed as the Ukrainian snake, which was um, explains the yellow trucks. Yeah, he had very sort of Ukrainian. Um, Symbol, symbolic sort of tri- uh, trunks, was not he? So, yeah, it was. Um, it kind of it didn't look any different than it does now. <laughs> He's ne- the man's never aged. Still, it's still a perch club, isn't it? In, on the German Indies, yeah, they're still going as far as I know. Yeah, it's a bit of a cringe thing, really. I think perch club. Yeah, the the um, neon masks were very much yeah. Purge isn't that big a thing anymore, but again, I'm looking, yeah, unlimited uh, BCW, uh, Baltic Championship Wrestling, and yeah. Suplex Schmieder, who I never heard of until about 30 seconds ago, <laughs> out of Lubeck, which and only won two shows, which might say, not tell you all you need to know. Um, the, after that, we had a promo video. Um, and this is one way you could tell this was a match you needed to pay attention to. Not, yeah, not really good promo video, actually, I thought. So start with Robert Dreisker turning on Big Daddy Walter, 16 Carol Gold, early that year. The yeah. foundations of Cerberus with uh, Adam Polak. I mean, where is he now? Like, he, he's the guy who's the iconic, you know, I'm not even going to try the cackle, but you know, the fact that made part of the music, um, Cerberus, you know, being the escape behind it all. And this is around about the time... This we touched on earlier. Uh, Axel Dieter Uni was part of Hot and Spice, but also, you no, know, I don't say flirting, that sounds wrong, but you know what I mean. You know, stand up, you know, lean towards Ring Camp. Uh, shock at the top, tries to beat Walter by DQ through the classic too much ass kicking finish. Um, so they're really getting service against Walter and uh, Junior going. And I say this match, I was not at all in love with the finish, but I thought this was the best match on the card. Service against uh, Junior Walter. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And this is this is um, I yeah, I agree with you there. Um, Walter Walter and um, Junior is a great pairing. I think it's obviously to this day it's obviously still working to a, to a, to a certain extent as far as I know. Um, but I think Walter and uh, Dreisker, whenever they do get in the ring, it's magic. Um, Obviously, there's an element of um, teacher and student there, but I just don't. I don't feel like. I feel like it's. Uh, he, he's. They. They both step up a gear, and I think it's because they both kind of know each other so intimately. Um, the crowd's absolutely buzzing for this, and I think it's because they were probably. I think they were buzzing for it probably because they'd had that barnstormer. Obviously, the big uh, outsiders hot and spicy match we've talked about already, but. Kind of a lot of the ingredients from that original match was in this one. Um, it was all like a all over the crowd brawl. I think I've said already. I think Dreisk is an incredibly uh, underrated sort of uh, crowd slash backstage brawl sort of guy. I think he does it really, really well. I think I don't know what he does, but he just seems to get them done really well. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was the the power of the it was the uh, the benefit of the uh, the power crowd. I think every single time when you have a hot Hamburg, it just adds another level to any match that really comes comes through that show. Um, as long as, there was, you know, the whole thing with um, when they sort of bring out the um, the ball rope and things. It's just like because Joyce Joyce has brought the ball rope back since, hasn't he? Uh, yes, that seems to be the loosely following along thing, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of like 
that that's a thing that's just continued and continued and sort of um when the um sort of junior gets hit with the the rope and then gets sort of ruled out by medical reasons then it ends up being the Walter as a um, as a handicap match and it's just like the fire they got to have behind Walter when it, it's just it's just the, the comeback that the comeback that he nearly gets it's you know the place is going mental for it I think it's the kind of thing like you know, I'll just yeah. look but outside this match was like two years early so not no six months no not no yesterday but not so not no distant past like this was molten hot. I mean, finish. You no, know, uh, Junior came back. Uh, I think Nero rolled up Walter. Junior waffled Nero with the bull rope. There's you obviously Q, which again I'm not too thrilled. But again, what do you what do you say? There was uh, servers getting under uh, Junior's skin. Uh, I think after match was something was well weird with uh, Demac coming out, shoving him and Walter as well. So you yeah. keep the whole thing, you know, hot and spicy, going, you know, fading away and. What became ring camp for coming to perform, but I say for match, you no, know, in a vacuum, this completely caught me off guard. Like I knew the whole, st- the whole story behind service and obviously where it's where it's been and gone. Yeah, this was caught me completely off guard. Yeah, for sure, and I think it's um, in a way, it's kind of like the this is a, ma- a kind of a not to say a throwaway match, but this is kind of a, a match that's on a let's say a B show, I think Fan is one of the B shows. Um and then effectively both teams effectively are still going two years later um in some form or another. And effectively like, you know, the, the Ring Camp Ring Camp continued beyond junior go, going. So that continued for another like four or five years after that. And Dreiska and Nero are, you know, at this point would 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 carry on for another four or five years. After that, so three or you know three years after that, so it's kind of like it, in a way, this is kind of a more influential match than I think it gets more any. It's a more influential match than it kind of gets credit for. Yep. It's not one that I've ever sort of seen as being held up as sort of one of the great WXW matches, but I, I, I actually think in a way this is this is one of them, especially in terms from of, this era anyway. Yeah, in terms of where what would grow from this as well. Yeah. Just based on that, it's some that, a series I really want to look at. I mean, when I first started going against the Brexit, you know, Serpus were kind of long gone. You know, they had the big reunion on that one tag league uh, weekend. Yeah. So I missed all of Serpus. So that, based on this, I want to go back to that, and that whole feud. So look out for that when I get free time. But um, main event, we had a unified world wrestling title match. Uh, Carsten Beck losing to John Klinger in a shade over 26 minutes. And didn't do it to me, Mike. I I don't know what it was, but and this wasn't even knowing like the next day, you know, uh, Bad Bones would lose the belt back to Carson Beck in the Oberhausen show, uh, and was the freeway with AJ Styles. But it's like this just I don't know what it was. It just did this just didn't click with me. Yeah, it's I agree with you. Um, it's very weird, isn't it? I I think when he was there, I was like, yeah, Bones is one of the big guys in WXW. Because this is probably seen the best in Europe gimmick on his trunks and all that. And it's just, it's just, the more I see of it, it just seems so weird. Bones was, Bones I don't think really fits WXW at all, especially not now. I mean, I sort of was, I was watching this, I think the match itself is a bit sort of middling really, it's not really anything particularly great. But, um. It wasn't a help, I was a hollow mind, but still. Yeah, well, yeah, there's that as well. But the um, I think the the the, the I was sort of sitting there. It's obviously bones are not a thing in WXW anymore. But I was just thinking, like, if it if that hadn't happened, whatever did happen, um, where does he fit in these days? And you know, I can't imagine a WXW where bones is still in it. I, mean, I don't. I don't think he would be. I would say, oh, not like Dave. Like he wouldn't be happy being open match because. You know, we've got to just look, you know, in GWF, he's always in and around some kind of title picture. But, yeah, I mean, we'd have thought if he was still around in WX3, it would have been some kind of sabbatical. If only just to do the whole, how can I miss you, you never go away kind of thing. Because, like, 
you, you you go back uh, again. I think it's 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 one of the great missed opportunities in wrestling. Is obviously the whole um, we didn't see the real collapse of Rise when we we really should have. But um, you know, it's like I could see Bones going after that that feud but you kind of then like well when he comes back it's like you know if he comes back do you have the absolute andy run i don't you know because surely bones has to be sort of in that picture really doesn't he kind of like i couldn't the, i can't uh, imagine all veteran yeah yeah it's just really weird i can't imagine him being there at all these days it's it it feels like it feels alien him being in the in the, he just looks so weird in the match in the show yeah very weird. Yes, yeah, so I mean, he's such a presence. He's such a presence, but I just don't feel like he, it's almost he's, like he's, a bit of a jigsaw when you kid you hammered into. You know, of course, you want to get the puzzle finished sooner, that kind of thing. Like it's, yeah. it fits somewhere, but just didn't seem to fit where it was there. Which again, that's yeah. another part of the best of because you had that whole you know, best new the champion of champions team of Andy. You know, that's another thing I want to see. You know what was that? And was that one of those like? Kimway of its time, or is it something that you know we've missed just you know hasn't aged well, but yeah, you know, that's uh, something for another time. But um, yeah, we fall out of this course weeks and months. So we said Carson Beck won the belt back the very next night in Oberhausen, <laughs> uh, beating Klinger in a freeway with it bad AJ Styles. Which yeah, that one again, you know, I've you know, reviewed stuff we had like Roshi Tanahashi in WXW against Absolute Andy of all people. Yeah, like you know, perhaps if we do when directly had that brief dotted line relationship with New Japan, what could have been? Well, um, effectively, the, 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 everyone in Germany woke up and then they WXW in New Japan had announced overnight, by the way, we have a partnership with WXW, and WXW were like, What do we? <laughs> that was the story. That was on a uh, the Federation, wasn't it? Uh... Global Force Wrestling, sorry, GFW got the yeah, G- G- GFW, WXW, Rev Pro, Ring of Honor, CMML, and uh, GFW. I mean, it'd be interesting to see what the world would, wrestling world would be like nowadays if that actually had sort of continued. But Would that yeah. be the only time Carson Beck did that one Rev Pro show against Dave Mastiff? Yeah, he did do one, yeah. I remember watching the back end again... I, I feel like I keep saying oh, it hasn't aged well, but like it's on the old Rev Pro on demand service if anyone wants to sign up and hunt it out. But like he, you no, know, Beck was open the show, like first match, obviously. Um, these, uh, oh god, what, what was this old music? I, I, I've got it in my head, but I've forgotten the name of it. Careless Whisper, Careless Whisper, a perceiver song. And unfortunately, because it's you know, 2014, 2015, Britain. And because Carson Beck's announced from Germany, you can probably guess the kind of responses that I was getting from, I think it was a Kent audience as well. Yeah, I think they, it must be one of the sitting board ones. Yeah, sitting in the games is one and only uh, Rev Pro thing. Yeah, uh, yeah Swallow Leisure Centre and Sitting Board. Actually, December 2012, so it would have been before most of this. But um, yeah, so anyway, back from our latest D tour. Um, Walter Axel Leach Jr. be able to keep feuding Cerberus. Uh, Pross would lose the tag titles as part of the World Tag Team League in October. Uh, Walter and Zack Sabre Jr. won that tournament with uh, Hot Spicy going out in flat semis to Red Dragon. Which... Zack Daddy. Yeah. Um, again, not pretty decent team from what I remember, but this game is why I want to plot the whole Cerberus. It feels like through Tag Festival, they kept them apart. To bring them back together just seemed no just going for the results at least it looked a bit weird but um yeah that's fan 2015 hamburg edition Breed, no really hot crowd some good wrestling and some stuff which probably doesn't quite hold up but on double xw now if you want to catch this part of your subscription and yeah it's a pretty good show and it's you know, worth going back into the archives as we will do again in the future no doubt yeah 100 percent um i think there's a lot of sort of untapped potential really um well there's there's a lot of secret secret bangers in the archives, and I think there's a lot of stuff in there that I think just it, it, the um, the the uh, the tag match on this show is enough sort of impetus for me to look further because 
this is just before I started sort of jumping in because I remember I watched the the first WXW show I ever watched was the anniversary show from this year, and um, so yeah, I, I was sort of aware of a lot of these people around the same sort of time. But it's um, yeah, it's the, it's worth having a look, sort of look through them for sure. These old ones, and I'd love I'd love to sort of go on a journey with some of these. I think because I think there's a lot of um, especially with the breaks like we have at the moment. Yeah. So that's the past coming up. Uh, next up, Rex W. Finks, what, two weeks on Thursday? It's coming quickly. We're heading to Sim City in Vienna. It's part of uh, the Catch Wrestling Festival, I think you said it was. Uh, yes, Catch Wrestling Festival, I believe. Um, I think that's the name of it. Um, We've got some matches announced. Uh, Sense of Alto, Peter Honey against Ambosses, Robert Dreisk and Lawrence Roman, mentioned last time out. Uh, Pretty Bastards against the Goliath Brothers, which I think is their first Brex to do since Carrot Witch. Good for them. Hector and Victor yeah. against the Trier and Baby Alson and Eva Kalaski. So, pretty decent card you know, for all their uh, Austria debut. Yeah, so it's called Catch Fest. That's it. Um, yeah, it's a decent little card. Um, I'll be going to it. Um, very excited. My first show in Austria. It'll be a WXW one. But um, yeah, I think it's a, sort of got a quietly. Uh, it's a sort of a quietly decent show there. Um, and they have obviously announced um, Tisha will be there as well as Tristan Archer. So you can probably assume they'll do something together. Um, but yeah, it's um, I think there's a, there's a lot of potential. But then obviously after that, it's it's the uh, my favourite weekend of the year, World Tag Team Festival. Yep, and of course next episode we'll preview that. Uh, it's a written preview on backbodydrop.com. To hope to be online again by the time this goes up. But uh, amongst some of the stuff that's been announced so far, we've got Inner Circle 12 in Gelsenkirchen, September 30th. Fuminori Abe against Masha Slamovich, which that's a tasty match just by itself. Yeah, for sure. Uh, then on the uh, Tag League uh, Tag Festival weekend, beg pardon, uh, Bobby Guns and Mike Bailey, that's going to be on the Saturday evening show in Oberhausen. The winner of that takes on Tristan Archer for the title on Sunday in the main event, presumably. Also on the Saturday show, we've got Jörn Simmons against Heisenberg in a street fight. And Metahan makes, this is probably the next turn, I guess, against Axel Tisch on the Wheel of Wrestling show on the Sunday. So, got a few big matches announced on that. Of course, they've got the full lineups for Femme Patal, so the Tag Festival lineup as well. Uh, they, they did have, announce... Uh, yeah. They did announce... Um... The um, Amal uh, getting into the Calypso and Allison match as well. So, yeah, Amal, Baby Allison, Calypso, three way for this title. That's on yeah. Femme Vitals, which I think, and again, I'm going to have to plaque to my writers' and websites offline. I believe it's about the first uh, proper show of the weekend in Oberhausen. It, it is, it is, yeah. So, because that's also got Killer Kelly's uh, W turn there. So, yeah. No, if you if you're right, if you're skipping on uh, in a circle, don't get there late on me Saturday. That's uh, two thirty doors, three thirty bell. Yeah, for sure. Uh, although um, we'll go into all that uh, close to the time when we do the preview. Yep, and we've announced way more names for the Wheel of Wrestling Wildcard Show. But again, we'll be back in probably about a week or two uh, because I know they yep. also said the tag festivals around Robin Tournament. There's eight tag teams. I yeah. don't think you can have enough space for all eight teams to do a round robin against each other. So I would expect blocks like we had back in the day. Yeah, because they've not really said anything about the format, is it? Because they tried doing 16 teams before and that didn't go well, is it? The, yeah, the four teams, the last one was like the, uh, the single elimination of that unique format, uh, copyright Jim Ross uh, tournament. Yeah, all we've got so far is round robin tournament for the world tag team title. Uh, Amboss, it's now Robert Dreisker and Icarus. Uh, Fuminori Abe, Shikahir Irie for Pretty Bastards. Uh, Eric Young and Axel Tisha for Sanity. Uh, Dominic Green and Kevin Koo, Violence is Forever. Sens of Alto and Idol Blancas for French Adores. Rotten Slot. Uh, what a Nikashi terrible name. <laughs> that name. Like, I don't know if it's you know, whether it's real or it's just something that's been played up you know, back in the day, but was it Andy Simmons did come to Ref Pro before everything apparently came and he not really played that name, but I guess the French were 
the luchadors, it's portmanteau, but <laughs> I mean I know where they're going from, but it's not it doesn't mean it's good. No. And last team uh, Chris Brooks and Masanasi Takahashi, the uh Kalamari Drunken Kings. So yeah, pretty decent lineup. Um I guess if you're going for winners again, we'll do the full preview next, but there's a couple of tag teams there that stand out as potential winners depending on future dates, but we'll plot all that out uh, later on. But Mike, uh, any last words before we wrap up? Because we were aiming for one hour and my word, we've smashed it again. We always do. We always aim for an hour and then, well, for less than an hour and then we end up plowing through it, didn't we? Um, no, not really. Uh, the only thing obviously I would have plugged personally for me is um, obviously uh, I'm on I'm at Mike Kilby on everything. Um, uh, and also I am on the Groundhopper's Guide, which is a football stadium travel guide sort of podcast. Um, that's on YouTube. Uh, if you go on YouTube and type in the Groundhopper's Guide on and Eddie, you should find it. Uh, and then, yeah, it's just on there. So it's a fun watch. I know a lot of people like it. It's good to so we get, get new people. But yeah, seven now, aren't you? In terms of ground, so it's not bad going. Yeah, I'm on fifty-seven now. Um, and he made few... plans for fifty-eight uh, later this month. Early no, there's, there's, I've got more than fifty-eight. <laughs> I'll be knocking on sixty by the end of the month. Um, but yeah, it's um, yeah, that's that's all I sort of have to ta- to uh, plug really. With me at Ian Wrestling on Twitter at Big Back Body Drop on Twitter as well for the reviews, uh, Cash Back Body Drop Com Form One, all that. The rest of it is quiet, at least, until Tag Festival, but we'll be back in a week or two for a Tag Festival preview. Thanks for yep. listening, everyone, and we will see you before we go to Germany. Cheers. Ciao.